Hey guys, it's Melissa. I am really excited and I wanted to be able to start off with a couple of statements right away. Now, here we go. I set my alarm clock in the middle of the night during my period so I don't soil the sheets. Sex is so painful. I swear that endo is a relationship kryptonite. And then last but not least, I feel like someone has taken my insides and put them into a meat grinder. These, no word of a lie, are statements that I got from women who have been suffering with endometriosis and I wanted to find out their experiences. So, of course, I wanted to be able to really create a whole series. So this is part one of two of my endometriosis series because, well, it's Endometriosis Awareness Month, so why the heck not? And in this SFT TV episode two, which I'm thrilled about, I am gonna be talking about the potential correlations of endometriosis that are not even spoken about, that might shock you, and even some amazing food remedies, tips, tricks, that you can incorporate into it. But remember, this is one of two, but I am thrilled. So the question that remains is, are you ready? If so, let's do this. Hey guys, it's Melissa Ramos, nutritionist with a background in Chinese medicine. I'm also the boss babe of sexy food therapy, helping people feel sexy from the inside out by balancing their hormones and their digestion. Okay, so let me just start off by saying this. Endometriosis, absolutely no joke, clearly. But I wanted to be able to break down first and foremost, well, what is endometriosis? And I see a bunch of you guys commenting already. Um, and I really encourage you guys to be able to, you know, ask questions, comment below. I might not get to it right away, but I definitely, most definitely will be getting to uh, your questions. We're also going to be doing a giveaway. I actually did jazz hands on a live stream. Not even live. But I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Everyone loves free stuff. So make sure that you are here for the entire half hour that we are together. So what is endometriosis? Let's start off there. Well, endometriosis is when the lining, which is supposed to be inside the uterus, is actually not growing inside the uterus. It's actually outside of the uterus, primarily in things like <clears throat> the fallopian tubes, the bowels. And primarily, and actually most commonly, I should say not primarily, is the ovaries. In fact, it can even end up developing into endometrial cysts, which a lot of women suffer with. And the pain can be so excruciating for many women. Some women are asymptomatic and lucky to be so. And then other women struggle during their period with really painful cramps, nausea, debilitating, pain going down their legs. Um, and it might not even be during their period. It could be even like on other days before their period. So some people have it all month long. And truthfully, you can go to the doctor and it is one of the number one uh, leading causes of infertility uh, that women are struggling with. But here is the weird part. And I want you guys to comment below right now and let me know, has a doctor ever told you that the, one of the ways to get wid, one of the ways to wid, because I can't speak today. One of the ways to get rid of endometriosis is to, well, just get pregnant. Any of you guys at all feel that way? Um, let me know. Let me know right now. Has anyone actually ever heard that? Because that I know is a huge pet peeve for many women. So I'll wait till you guys actually uh, comment below. But I'm curious about your, um, your experience on that. Absolutely. So anyways, I want to break down one of uh, the correlations that are coming out today that is um, quite huge, quite huge. Um, and that is that there is a connection with endometriosis and autoimmune diseases. 
So you actually have a higher chance of developing autoimmune diseases. But some people are even speculating that endometriosis is an autoimmune disease. I wouldn't actually go that far to say that, but I will say that I can absolutely see how there could be a correlation. Now, for those of you guys who have absolutely no idea what an autoimmune disease is or an at all, I'll let you know that this essentially is when the immune system makes these inflammatory cytokines and also these autoantibodies. And what they do is they actually begin to inflame the lesions of endometriosis and their growth. And I'm not saying that autoimmune it, like diseases are only exclusive to endometriosis because we see that with Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease as well. But the, here's the thing. With endometriosis, there's no specific test to check if a specific antibody, like Hashimoto's, there is an antibody that you can ask your doctor to test. And if that antibody is out of is in high levels, then you'd be like, okay, she's got Hashimoto's. But with endo, that isn't exactly the case. So that makes it a little bit tricky. Um, I do want to be able to report back. So I've got a bunch of women saying yes, that they were told. Um, that if they just got pregnant, that the endometriosis would just go away. But it's kind of hard to get pregnant if you got endometriosis. Um, I was told that when I was 15. Oh my goodness! Ugh. Onwards. So here's the deal. The thing that I find really interesting is that IgG antibodies are actually found to be elevated in women with endometriosis. Okay? Now you might be kind of going, I have no idea what IgG antibodies are. That's totally cool. I'm going to actually explain it to you. So you know when you go to the doctor and you get a skin prick test to test for a bunch of allergies? That is measuring an antibody called IgE. And that's testing you for an immediate response versus IgG would test for a delayed response. And the people who can actually uh, test your IgG antibodies um, would be like a functional medical doctor or even your naturopath. Um, and those are definitely two professionals that would be more than glad to do so. Um, the interesting thing is if your IgG uh, antibodies are elevated, so say for example, I eat an egg, okay? I'm not allergic to it, but I'm intolerant to it. That would show up in my IgG panel if I'm intolerant to a food. But here is the, the crazy part about this. Bananas crazy, okay? <laughs> is that when you actually um, react to an egg that you're intolerant to, it's not immediate. It could be like two, three, four days, usually three days, two to three days after consumption of the food. That makes it really hard. So if you eat eggs and you are truly intolerant and say you get the runs, but you eat an apple on day three, and all of a sudden you're like, Whew! you go right to the bathroom and you get the loose poops. You're dropping way too many kids off at the pool at that point. And what ends up happening is you're kind of going, I just ate a freaking apple. What the heck? But it's not the apple that caused you to run to the bathroom to drop the kids, too many kids off at the pool. It was actually the egg. And the only way to tell that is from IgG tests, which I said again is from your naturopath or your um, functional medical doctor. So IgG antibodies tend to be high. So what does this tell me and why on earth am I telling you this? Well, the reason why is because autoimmune issues and diseases are caused, in my opinion, from a leaky gut. Um, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about that, but clearly I am so freaking excited because we're going to be talking about poo today. One of my favorite topics, which means Poopy can actually join with us. <laughs> um, but I will say this, poo, 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 digestion, we are going to be talking about it because it's darn important. If you have a leaky gut, essentially we have these junctions in the intestines, okay? They're supposed to be nice and tight. I call them like soccer players, okay? Like soccer players at a shootout, wearing those, maybe the Italian soccer player team because they wear those really tight, soccer jerseys than any other team. Anyways, I digress. But yes, so <laughs> the junctions are really tight, okay? And the thing is, is when they're super duper tight, then nothing can actually uh, pass through that small intestine. But when it's not tight, um, and things will pass through, and your body ends up developing these antibodies towards them, because the body is like, invader, 
this ain't supposed to be here. We got to develop antibodies uh, against it. And the interesting thing about this is that the reason why that these junctures are open versus nice and closed together is for multiple reasons. And uh, from a food perspective, which obviously I'm going to be talking about a little bit here, um, there are various foods like gluten, dairy, all the ones that we know about, but gluten, dairy, sugar, um, you know, too much alcohol, coffee, believe it or not, uh, in excess, uh, can certainly wreak havoc on the gut. Uh, we're looking at a lot of processed foods. So all these really poor quality foods can open the junctures of the gut. But here's really the impor another important part about endometriosis and this leaky gut. Because if there's an association with autoimmunity, we have to be able to look at the gut and poo, as I mentioned. Uh, but so the other thing that can actually create a leaky gut is the fact that if there are, if there's a lot of stress, I mean, how many of you guys are actually stressed? Like seriously. How many of you guys are, are actually stressed? If you are stressed, let me know. Um, but I will say this much right now, that stress is a huge part of what actually opens up those junctures. Because we go into this sympathetic state, which is the fight or flight, or the parasympathetic state which is the opposite of that, which is rest or digest. And it's the reason why that in my programs like Sexy Lady Balls, which is my hormone membership program, I talk a lot about um, meditation and I talk a lot about lifestyle tools that we can incorporate. I speak a lot about mindset because I actually believe that mindset is one of the number one things that you can actually incorporate into your world even before trying to do anything else. Because if your mindset and your thought patterns are all messed up and you're complaining and you're miserable and there's the victim state and all that jazz and all the food's really not going to do very much. So I will say that that is a huge, huge factor uh, behind the mix. And so here are some actual lifestyle tools that can actually close those junctures, so those tight, those uh, Italian soccer players can be nice and tight together in your intestines. And that is um, inversions. So when you are upside down. I'm not talking about you doing a crazy yoga posture. Things like even downward dog can actually help to close the junctures in the small intestine. Um, the reason why is because what it's doing is it's stimulating the vagus nerve. And there's this big nerve that goes from the gut right to the brain. And it's wonderful and it sends signals back and forth. So when we stimulate the vagus nerve, um, we can actually get into the parasympathetic state, which is the rest and digest state. So the amount of people who roll their eyes to me and say, just tell me what pill I can have or what can I eat? I will tell you this much right now, that mindset is huge. It is huge for the healing of your body. It's huge for the healing of autoimmune issues, for leaky gut. All those things are massive. Um, believe it or not, even gargling, no word of a lie, gargling actually stimulates the vagus nerve, which helps to put us into that rest and digest state. So those are really, really big uh, parts of it. Um, another really interesting fact that I uh, noticed is that six studies are out there to suggest that women with endometriosis are more susceptible to allergic manifestations. Holy crap. So how many of you guys who are listening in here have a problem with allergies? How many of you guys here have a problem with allergies? I just want to be able to check out. So we've got a bunch of people saying stress through the roof. Uh, Charisma says stress through the roof. Kimberly's stressed. Heidi's stressed. Linda. Gabrielle's incredibly stressed. All these people are just saying, I am stressed. So you can't heal your endo if you're insanely stressed. Just FYI. Okay, so anybody here? Aaron says, I'm allergic to everything. So that's kind of crazy. Six studies to suggest that women with endo are more susceptible to allergic manifestations. Like, that's nuts. So what happens when we have these allergic manifestations is that our mast cells which secretes, these are these cells, they secrete histamine. And you might have heard that word histamine. And they're not just located, there's a bunch of them located in the bowels, which obviously is super important given we're talking about, yeah, I'm bringing them out again, poo. Um, but the, the funny, or not the funny part, but the interesting part is that they're also located in the ovaries, 
Mast cells are actually in the ovaries and also they're on the uterus. Hot. Yes. I don't know if that just freaked you right out, but you can actually, you can actually secrete histamine from your ovaries or your uterus. What? Like, that to me is insane. So we got Carolyn is saying lots of allergies, etc. Um, so those are really, really big parts. Um, but here is an interesting fact. Histamine actually promotes ovulation. I'm not going to tell you that, hey, go eat a big bottle of Cheese Whiz and go histamine yourself so you can ovulate. So here's the caveat with that statement, is it actually produces immature eggs. So they're not even going to actually become fertile. But it's just an interesting fact I want to bring up. The other thing that I think is fascinating is that estrogen stimulates mast cells. Remember, those are the cells that secrete histamine. But estrogen stimulates mast cells to make more histamine, okay? So in endometriosis, like in Sexy Lady Balls in my hormone membership, uh, uh, membership group, women who come to me with endometriosis, whether it's in that that membership uh, that I have or, you know, in private consultation, I'm always going to address the fact that there is an increased level of estrogen because it is an estrogen dominant condition. No question about it. Um, and we have to work on both. And that's the reason why that I'm saying to you today, yes, estrogen is a part of the profile, but so could autoimmunity be in there as well. And if that's the case, then we got to work on the gut and we have to work on the excess estrogen because estrogen tells the body to grow. And according to this, estrogen stimulates mast cells to increase, to make more histamine. That's nuts. And estrogen also lowers an enzyme, which is called DAO, okay, dimase oxidase, which I like to call it the Tao. Like I kind of like think of like this ancient... <laughs> Chinese, like, badass philosopher, the Tao enzyme. And the Tao enzyme is super freaking important because what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to be able to eat away at histamine before it even creates a reaction in you. So you don't want that enzyme lowered. But the problem is estrogen actually lowers the Tao enzyme. Not good. And histamine stimulates the ovaries to make more estrogen. You don't want that at all. This, these are like really big deals. Um, I want to check in really quickly here. People are going, really? Wow, says Eleonora. Sylvia's like Gar Sylvia Garcia de Bejarano. I don't know if I'm even saying your name right, so I apologize. Uh, allergies, lacto intolerance, she says. Uh, Morena says, if in my IgG test I had no reaction to gluten, can I, can I eat it then? No. <laughs> no. Don't eat gluten. It's like glue in your intestines. And I don't care how many studies that there are that are not even studies, but like reports that are coming out there that are saying gluten is totally fine. It's fine to eat. No, it's like glue in your intestines. It slows the process down so significantly and it is an inflammatory food. You do not want to create more inflammation in your body. You want to make sure that those digestive pipes are working like clockwork. So super duper duper important. Um, Jillian says here, I have endo and my estrogen is very low. What's up with that? Well, it depends. So how was your, the first thing I would actually say is how was your estrogen tested? Did you get tested by a naturopath? That's actually a really important thing to, um, or when they tested your estrogen, did they do from a naturopath? Did you do it just from your, your medical doctor? There's different factors to consider. So you have three estrogens, um, and it's important to see where you tested for all of them. And those three estrogens, they also have metabolites. I call them estrogens children. <laughs> um, there are some that are very good for you, and there's some when they're in excess can be actually quite bad for you. So I'd be curious to look at your metabolites. Um, I'd be curious what sort of tests that you actually got done because not all tests are created equally. Um, so that's a really, really huge thing. Um, so naturopath during my follicular cycle. I don't know which test that she did, and I'd be curious if the metabolites were tested as well. 
Um, hi, Tana. How's it going? Uh, goal getter. So helpful to take antihistamines in addition to uh, additional methods, of course. I'm not a huge fan of antihistamines because there's always going to be side effects to this. Um, the other thing to really understand, um, and that's the one thing I'm not promoting, is for you to go running off to take, um, you know, allergy meds. You have to start at the gut. So I want to be able to actually do a little game show with you, which means I'm going to tap on the kombucha. All right, so if you are frickin' ready, I want to be able to take you into the grocery store, and I filmed this to be able to do a little true and false game with you. So you're going to see three different uh, food items that I'm going to show you. Actually, one's a drink. Um, and I want you to be able to answer true or false. So when you see these items, you're going to write down the food item dash whatever your answer is. Okay? So... Let's do this. Okay, so as you guys know, uh, we are doing a true and false um, on three different foods that um, I want to find out if you guys think uh, true or false, if this is good for autoimmune conditions or not. So the first one is quinoa. You guys can see that. True or false. Is this good if you have an autoimmune condition? Make sure that you write down your answer below. Okay, so the next thing I have here is green tea. So item number two, do you think that this is healthy for you when you have an autoimmune condition? True or false? Okay, so last item is goji berries. Are these healthy for you when you have an autoimmune condition? True or false? Let me know by commenting below. All right, guys, that's it. Okay, guys, so those were three food items. I'm getting people. Um, so Candace, you got to write the food item first. Otherwise, I have no idea what you're saying true to. <laughs> Remember that. Um, otherwise, I have no idea. And of course, there's my dog who's going to bark. This is the problem when you have a dog. He's going to bark. All right, so let's get to this. Um, okay, so quinoa, Christina says good. Uh, Nicole says green tea is true. Um, so a bunch of people are thinking green tea is true. A lot of people are thinking quinoa is false. How about goji berries? Anybody else here think think about goji berries, like true or false on the goji berry part? Uh, let me know. So here is the dealio. I'm going to give you guys the answer. And remember, if you're watching in right now, just a reminder, I am going to be doing a giveaway of two products. So make sure that you stay with me. We are going to be wrapping up probably in the next seven uh probably 10 minutes or so. Okay, so quinoa was the first ingredient. A bunch of y'all are saying, uh, you know, that it increase uh, histamine levels. You guys are saying no, um, or that it's bad for autoimmune conditions. My apologies. So the answer is, is that I actually would not suggest quinoa if you've got an autoimmune condition. So the answer is, is that it's not good for autoimmune conditions at all. It is not good. And the reason why is because quinoa contains saponins in them. So if you ever soak your uh, quinoa, ever, um, you are going to notice that these like little suds come up. And those are actually saponins. And now you can soak them and you might be like, well, I can soak them overnight and then like rinse it and make sure it's all good. But it's not necessarily that you're going to be getting all of it out. And those saponins can actually irritate the gut. And the interesting thing is, is I found a lot of people who I work with in Sexy Lady Balls, my hormone membership program, that they complain that grains actually just doesn't sit well with them. So it's one of the things that I actually don't recommend that you consume is quinoa if you have endometriosis. And the reason why is because the saponins can actually irritate the gut. Yes, you can wash it for sure, but it's no telling if it's going to be completely fine. Um, okay. Uh, good to know I eat it and I have autoimmune. Okay. Well, totally, uh, Maria. So I'm glad that I mentioned that. Okay. So the second food item, green tea. Is it good for autoimmune conditions or is it not good for autoimmune conditions? So, um, and again, if you're just tuning in, there is a correlation between endometriosis and autoimmune uh, disease uh, that some people are now calling it an autoimmune disease. So uh, green tea actually is 
great if you've got an autoimmune uh, condition. Um, and it's fantastic because it really is healing uh, in so many capacities. It is much better than having uh, coffee. Uh, one of the things actually that I recommend is matcha. And matcha is this powdered green tea. It's really concentrated. Um, I love Do Matcha. It's one of my favorite brands. I have no affiliation with them, just so you know. I just love it, so I'm just letting you know. Um, and I make lattes out of them, which is just with unsweetened almond milk. And then I end up uh, putting in uh, St. Francis coconut oil into the mix. Um, and then I put that into a pot, add some sweetener, some salt, throw it in a blender, and blend that shiz up and it's delicious. But green tea is phenomenal. So uh, if you're looking for creamy comfort, do the latte that I just recommended. And you know, otherwise green tea throughout the day is phenomenal. So those, uh, charisma, which by the way, love your name. Uh, good, I'm a tea addict, she says. Um, Rachel's like, oh, thank God I drink gallons. Okay, so we're having a lot of questions about, uh, Angie has mentioned this, but I know a lot of people also have as well, have mentioned, is PCOS considered an autoimmune condition? It's a really good question. Um, I haven't seen so much in research, but with all my women who um, have hormonal issues, I'm very much a fan of trying to heal the gut. Um, because it's important. Our gut is like the central burner of our bodies. But... As I mentioned earlier, mindset is a huge freaking part of the entire game because, you know, you fall off the bandwagon. You can like, falling off the bandwagon doesn't just mean that, oh, hey, I went out, I had, you know, one too many drinks over the weekend, or I ate something that I shouldn't have. That's just, hey, you did this. But if you can get back on the bandwagon versus like falling off the bandwagon and getting tons of bruises because you were off it for like weeks, that's falling off the bandwagon. But it takes mindset to stay um, on par and to stay on your game. So it's the reason why that I'm so such a big advocate of that because you can't heal everything if you are like mm, constantly stressed all the time. So really, really, really important. Um, what I said, should I not take green tea after a certain time? Um, I probably wouldn't do it, you know, uh, after probably after like noon. And the reason why is because caffeine, I've seen this specifically with coffee, can actually interfere with GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that's responsible for a lot, but specifically to actually help us uh, to relax uh, and to have a really good night's sleep. Um, Candace says, I have endo. I had seven surgeries. Wow. Two of the surgeries were after my hysterectomy because my uh, rejected the hormone I rejected the hormone replacement and I produced too much estrogen. Been in menopause for six years and gained lots of weight. What do I do? I have IBS. Um, to be honest with you, I need to see the whole profile. So it's really hard for me to answer that, um, especially over a live stream. Uh, but in, that's one of the reasons why I created Sexy Lady Balls is because when women join, they fill out my assessment, which is a very comprehensive assessment. And then everybody who joins the program ends up getting an individualized protocol. Um, that's substantial. There is no online program, at least that I've seen, that does that. Um, so that's something that I would love to be able to see more from you. And just so you guys know, just above this video, there is a link for my free endo guide. So you can make sure that you click that at the end of this uh, video and uh, check out the guide, get it. There's uh, some ma more great tools that you can actually incorporate uh, that will be absolutely Great. Um, okay, so we talked about green tea. The other things that I want to be able to talk about from a food perspective is incorporate bone broth. Um, I freaking love bone broth. The thing, the number one reason um, why people are doing bone broth wrong is because they're not boiling the bones first. This sounds crazy, but it's true. So you boil the bones first for 20 minutes. When you're done, you take them out, not with your hands. Otherwise, you'll burn yourself with tongs. <laughs> Take out the bones, and then from there, you can just put them in your crock pot, and you can put your onions and garlic and all that jazz into your crock pot. For me personally, after I boil them for 20 minutes, I actually roast them at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And the reason why I roast them, honestly, is only for the flavor. 
uh, because it imparts a much taste to your bone broth. But the reason why you have to boil your bones first is because if you don't, those impurities can not only make the bone broth taste ranky, but they can actually irritate the gut. I've actually had some people who've been like, yeah, I had bone broth and it's disgusting because there's rankiness. And other people were like, it just made me feel crummy afterwards. And the reason why is because they didn't boil the bones. So boil your bones. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing. Incorporating bone marrow is another thing that I would suggest. So like bone broth, if you get, when you get bones from the butcher, um, which is where you get them from, but make sure that they're obviously organic. They're not, you know, from a commercial feedlot farm uh, pasture raised if possible. Uh, but what they can do is they can slice through the bone at the butcher and you can get some of them like that so that they're like little canoes and you roast them um, in the oven for half hour, 40 minutes at like 375. And then when you pull them out, they're phenomenal. Just know that if they're frozen, they'll probably take about 40 minutes, but usually not frozen. It's about 20, 25 minutes. So I freaking love having bone marrow. It's delicious. Once you take it out of the oven, you sprinkle some salt over it and it's amazing. Um, so definitely something that I love. Uh, remove dairy. We talked about gluten, but remove dairy. Dairy is brutal if you have autoimmune conditions. It's brutal if you have endometriosis. And from a Chinese medical perspective, the thing that's really interesting is, is that um, dairy is a very damp forming food, just like gluten. So you don't want dampness because endometriosis, according to Chinese medicine, is a damp type condition. It's dampness that's growing on other parts of the body. So really, really, really important. Um, Ellen Norris says, are you a licensed nutritionist? My health plan will cover nutrition starting in April. Uh, well, send an email over to me, uh, Eleanor. I'm pretty sure that you have my email address and we'll chat. Um, okay, so Chris says, I'm getting my hormones tested. Is a saliva test four samples throughout the day through Labrix Clinical a good test? Um, I need to know more because my test that I do with patients is definitely more substantial. Um, it tests a lot. So I'm not entirely familiar with that uh, lab. Uh, Zeb Zeba, Zeba, um, I have an overall sensitivity in my abdomen. It hurts in a few minutes if I wear regular fit jeans or pants. Do you think maybe it's might not be due to endometriosis. Well, first and foremost, the only way to get diagnosed with endometriosis is by getting a laparoscopy. They put hopefully two little small holes in you um, and they blow your cavity up with air. It's an in and out procedure and then they're able to assess it. So I don't want you guys self-diagnosing. Don't start going on Google because Google will tell you you've got cancer. Um, so don't do that. Uh, but I will certainly say to you that I think it's really, really important for you to, if you feel that you've got endo, get tested. As I said, remove dairy. Turmeric, also another food. A 2012 animal study actually demonstrated that turmeric can promote the regression of endometriosis. The only thing you have to know about turmeric is, is that turmeric is one of those uh, foods that the bioavailability, so how much your body actually absorbs and assimilates, is actually quite poor. So you need to make sure that you're adding in black pepper, because the active component of pepper, which is piperine, piperine makes pepper pungent, say that five times fast, is actually what helps to increase the bioavailability of turmeric. Also a fat, and I always use co coconut oil uh, because it's amazing for helping to uh, increase the bioavailability of the turmeric. Um, now we're talking about histamine levels, we are talking about that before, how we are seeing that women with endometriosis uh, tend to have more allergic reactions. Well, we need to decrease that histamine. And believe it or not, watercress, I know it's a bitter green, but if you can include that in your world, that would be awesome because it actually decreases histamine by 60%. That's bananas. Um, also, holy basil, you might say basil, I say basil, actually also decreases histamine levels. And um, there are a plethora of other things. A high polyphenol uh, oil, olive oil, I should say. Um, make sure it's organic. Don't get the crappy olive oil because if you do, it's going to be in a plastic bottle potentially. Even if it's in a glass bottle, like light olive oil is BS. Um, olive oil can be cut with soy, canola oil. Um, it can be dyed green with chlorophyll. It's a really dirty business. So make sure you're getting organic olive oil, but a high polyphenol count is great. Um, 
Aloe vera gel is also uh, helps to decrease histamine levels. The only thing about aloe vera gel is that it contains anthroquinones in it, which is a component that can make you poop. Yeah. So just be careful, because for some people, it makes them poop. Um, also, you want to increase your fats, and you want to greatly reduce your grains. Um, I'm not saying not have any sort of starches at all. I'm not advocating the keto diet, um, but I do truthfully uh, think that we are consuming way too much starch because it's kind of a quick grab and go. You see it when you go out, you'll see a lot of that. Um, so that's really huge. And then um, the last thing that I want to be able to uh, bring up with you guys, um, and remember, I can't go through all this stuff for endos. The reason why we're doing you know, part one of two uh, this week in part two of my endometriosis series is going to be happening next week. Um, and I'll be talking more. I'll be talking about supplements then. I'll be giving you guys some demonstrations of stuff you can do yourself. I don't know why I just did that wiggle, but I just thought that would be great. So um, we're going to be doing this also again next Thursday, so make sure you tune in. Uh, but the thing that I do want to be able to bring up to you guys is before you eat, it's actually really important to incorporate some bitters. Now, if you don't know what bitters are, I'm not talking about Swedish bitters. Swedish bitters, I don't know why I said it that way, but Swedish bitters contains a herb called senna. Senna will make you poop, but it will you will create a bowel dependency on it. It's a laxative, not good. You don't want to be dropping too many kids off at the pool too often because it's gonna create a bowel dependency. So no Swedish bitters. The bitters I'm actually talking to you guys about actually, let me show you guys here, is St. Francis, and I'm putting this here because the light won't make you, won't allow you to see the label, because production just wants to be difficult. But St. Francis <laughs> bitters, I freaking love these. I take this five to 10 minutes before I eat. It's really important to work on your liver when you've got a hormonal condition because the liver has to conjugate and has to really process a lot of those um, hormones and toxins because if it can't do that, they're going to be floating in excess in your system and building up. So liver work is crucial. So we've spoken today about the autoimmune um, aspect of it and taking care of your gut. We've spoken about various foods. We've spoken about the estrogen part of it, but we've also talked a little bit about liver. So this is one of my favorite tinctures, and I am actually going to be giving away one of the liquid ones, which I'll show you how to take. So five, 10 minutes before you eat. Oh, I'm just gonna put some hair on your chest. Okay. I have no idea why I was trying to count with my mouth open, but if you heard those weird sounds, that's exactly what I was trying to do. So I'm gonna be giving away a bottle of this. In addition, I'm gonna be giving a bottle of their capsules. Really great to work on your liver. We're gonna be talking about more supplements about the liver. We're gonna be talking about uh, more things you can do next week. Remember, free guide up above. Go download that ASAP. But here, if you guys wanna win this, if you guys want to win this right now, I guess it tastes bad, says Maria. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of an understatement. Tastes like crap, but it works. Okay, it's actually helping to pump out bile flow, which is really important because that's like the river of all your like toxins and horm excess hormones and stuff, and then the bile goes into your poop, and then you poop it out. It's kind of a simplistic explanation of it. So here, two products. Right now, I'm giving it away to two different people. I will mail this shiz out to you. But, but, first, who wants to win these two products? Let me know. If you do, give me a hell yes. I want to hear from you right now. Let me know. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> All right, St. Francis Herb Farm. Please, Guadalupe says, yes. I tried to order it the last time you program, it wouldn't let me. Maybe you're in the States. Bile is your friend. Yes, Sheila. Bile is your friend. Absolutely. Yay. Okay. So 
Um, <laughs> a bunch of people are like, hell yeah. So give me a bunch of thumbs up, hearts. Make sure you guys share this video. Do me that favor. So a bunch of you guys want to win. So here is the thing. Here is how you're going to win this. All right? You with me? Number one, you have to share this video. So I want you guys right now to just click share. I want you to share this to your people right now. That is the number one thing that I want you to do. Okay? And a bunch of hearts and hearts and thumbs up. Give me all you got, hearts and thumbs up, and share this video right now. So I'm going to give you guys two seconds while I do the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. Really bad impersonation. But I'm giving you a second to share this video. Do a thumbs up. Do some hearts. You got this. All right? Okay. So a bunch of people, share, 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 share this video. Okay. So now that we got that covered, <laughs> I'm going to be asking you guys a trivia question. You guys ready? I'm going to pick the first two people who can answer this question. What was the name of the enzyme that helps to break down histamine? That's your question. Okay? So, a bunch of people shared it. Awesome. You got to share this too, okay? <laughs> All right, so a bunch of people have shared it. Thank you so much for sharing, people. All right, so let me know what your answer is. Comment below. The second I see the first two people, I'm going to call that out. There's a little bit of delay on live stream, so just bear with me. Liked it, loved it, and shared it. Thank you, Tanya. Ah, really appreciate all the love, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Share with the poopy emojis. Sweet. Okay, we have our first winner, which is Colette Boys Claire, and I'm really hoping I pronounced your last name right, Colette. Okay, so Colette is the first winner. I'm waiting for the second winner. So Colette, I'm going to give you the tincture, not DHA. No, so what's the name of the enzyme? No, not DEO, not DHA, not DHA. Oh, here you guys are so close. Dow, awesome. So Candace is the second person. So we have Colette Boys Claire, who was the first winner. And Candace, you are the second winner which is uh, going to be with the bottle of St. Francis Hepato DR. This is a phenomenal product. If you are in Canada, guys, you guys got to pick up this product. It's phenomenal uh, to help to promote great liver health, to promote digestion. I would really strongly suggest it. So for those two winners, not four, two, <laughs> you've won this product. Um, and what I want you to do is make sure that you actually DM me. So here in, just private message me here on my Facebook uh, fan page, DM me, and then uh, let me know what your email address is. So make sure that you do that, okay? So make sure that you do that, and once you do, then I can um, give your uh, details over to uh, my assistant. So give me your email address and give me your mailing address and your name, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> mailing address name and uh, email address and then uh, but make sure that you private message me above uh, so we have oh, so Candace is like yay awesome so no it's not the DOA that's dead on a on arrival Danita but that did give me a bit of a chuckle I'm not gonna lie um, all right so congrats ladies you guys are awesome that wasn't an easy question um, because I really didn't talk about uh, DAO uh, very much past that I spoke a little bit about it but I think I only mentioned it about like once or twice so you guys rocked the freaking house so guys that is your episode of SFT TV I'm thrilled to be able to do episode two next week so in the meantime, make sure you tune in next week, Thursday, 7 p.m. And we're going to be having another endometriosis party for my endo warriors. And I'm so excited to be able to be sharing more information. Make sure that you click that link above and get my free endo guide in the meantime. Super darn important. Share this video. Like it. Love it. 
give me some love right now and let me know that you guys enjoyed this because I have had a blast with you tonight. So guys, I can't even tell you how happy I am. And if you guys want, you can dance with me for a little bit. <laughs> All right, guys, have yourselves a freaking amazing night. And like I said, like it, share it, love it. Tell me if you guys have any questions at all. If you guys have any feedback. Did you like this episode? If you did, write it down right now. Tell me you like this episode. Otherwise, I'm hoping I can see you next week. All right. Take care. Bye.